Hi everyone, John Herzenberg here. This talk is on the assessment of limb alignment in the frontal plane using the MAP test. These are my disclosures. And we'll start with this eight-year-old boy with Blount disease. Obviously he has a genoverum. The question we want to ask is where is the genoverum coming from? The femur, the tibia, or both? So we start by drawing a mechanical axis line, which is defined as a line from a center of a joint to a center of a joint. Here we're drawing the mechanical axis of the entire limb, from the hip to the ankle. The next thing we'll do is to measure the perpendicular distance from the center of the knee to the mechanical axis line. And in this case, it measures 5.7 centimeters, which is way off. It should be zero. It should be going right through the center of the knee. But 5.7 centimeters tells us only that we have genoverum. It doesn't tell us if this is coming from the femur or the tibia. So the next part of the MAP test is to analyze the joint angles. So here I've drawn a dotted line to represent the mechanical axis of the femur and a solid line to represent the mechanical axis of the tibia. In addition, the joint lines have been drawn, particularly around the knee, but also at the hip and the ankle. What's next? Next, we'll measure or analyze the joint angles. So I've drawn in all the measurements here, and the ones I want to focus on are the LDFA and the MPTA. The LDFA here measures 94 degrees. Normal is 85 to 90, so that's bad. It's in Varus. The MPTA measures 77 degrees, also abnormal. Should be between 85 and 90. So both the LDFA and the MPTA are not good. So we conclude that this patient has both a varus femur and a varus tibia. Which bone to pick? Well, we could pick both, and we could correct both the femur and the tibia back to normal angles. And the options for that would include guided growth, for example, putting screw plates or staples on the lateral aspect of the distal femur and the proximal aspect uh, of the lateral tibia. Or we could do a distal femoral osteotomy and a proximal tibial osteotomy. That's a lot of surgery. So I'd like just to take this opportunity to bring up a, another concept, and that's the concept of good combo, bad combo. So in this diagram, the normal situation, we have an 87 degree LDFA and an 87 degree MPTA. A bad combination would be if we had both uh, varus of the proximal tibia and valgus of the distal femur. A good combination is valgus of the proximal tibia and varus of the distal femur. Well, why, why is this a good combination and a bad combination? In the bad combination, when you have a knee joint that's sloped down, the distal femoral condyles slide and shear across the joint, and that leads to arthritis. In the good combination, the adductor moment does not cause shearing, but rather causes compression of the joint. So we think that a combination of varus distal femur and valgus proximal tibia is good. Whereas a valgus distal femur and a varus proximal tibia is bad. Now, can you have too much of a good thing? Here I've drawn this as a 95 degree angle in the distal femoral varus and a proximal tibial angle of 95 degrees. But what if it was 100 and 100? We'd still have a perfect mechanical axis line, but there's a limit to how much sloping you can have. I don't know exactly where that limit is, but I'm happy to accept 95, 100 degrees. I wouldn't accept. So in conclusion, we can use the concept of the good combo, bad combo to pick the tibia only, accept the 94 degree lateral distal femoral angle, and make the tibia match it with a 94 degree medial proximal tibial angle, the so-called good combination of varus femur and valgus tibia.
you have to use your judgment. Thank you very much.